Okay, so uh, linear operators. Okay, so that's the, in a way, the topic of of the whole course. In a way, in a way. Uh, so, uh, so remember that. Um, um, remember the pre-calculus that we talked about early on. We have we have uh, uh, we have sets, and uh, and then uh, uh, say x y z. Okay, and then we have uh, functions from x to y. So. OK, so and now uh, what we have talked about uh, quite a bit is uh, we talked about uh, vector spaces. Uh, um, once again, X, Y, Z, and once again, there are functions from uh, X to Y. OK. Uh, and uh, and then uh, and then naturally, uh, what is so special about do we just take anything here uh, um, it, it, to be a function? We know that it, uh, you can think of any function um, be between two vector spaces that, that, that doesn't really matter. Um, uh, but uh, so they, these are, the answer, of course, no, uh, these are special. So special functions, no, not all functions, not even, uh, you know, issues of, of of a calculus will come up like continuity or anything like that. Even more special, really special. So well, what is so special about it? And the answer is is uh, is algebra. So, so if we were to speak of x and y, uh, uh, x and y, they are not sets anymore. They are uh, they are uh, uh, they are um, they are vector spaces. So we have vector we have algebra here. So let's just say algebra uh, uh, for for the sake of. Uh, of uh, of the once again analogy from real numbers, so these could be real numbers, right? So if we start with the numerical uh, numerical case, uh, then you have a function between from reals to reals. That's the numerical case, and then then the question might be, what happens to the algebra uh, on X in the domain once we carry out the transformation and see what what where these axes land in Y? Okay, and the uh, the answer the answer sh could be anything. Uh, but uh, what makes it so special is that the answer is uh, so. So the question is, what happens to uh, to the algebra of X under under F? Okay, and the the answer general answer is anything. Okay, so the answer is anything, and our answer is is uh, not. In other words, it, we want it to be intact. So the algebra of, of the domain should be transferred, be transferred into the codomain intact. So, so these are just words. Let's, let's uh, look at some examples. And uh, uh, so the, the, the algebra, so what's in a function? Now, naturally, uh, as I said, function from R to R is always in, in, in our mind so that we can, we can uh, do a prog progress from numerical functions to plane and then to, to, to spaces of any dimension that we like. OK, so uh, uh, so but all what they have in common is they're all vector spaces. So uh, so the uh, the question is, uh, is, is well, let me just jump straight to to the point. Uh, so go to one dimensional case again uh, and uh, uh, we have a look at numerical functions and look at the function. What is so special about function f of x equal to 2x? It preserves the algebra as I, as I in this case uh, addition. So if I have addition, this is in the uh, it's still a function from R to R, and there are two copies of R. And we have addition here, we have addition there. So you can imagine that if they are actually different in some way. So I have addition here, x to y, x and y are here to be added, and then once they're transferred into 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 uh, uh, into the other copy into the code, I mean this is the another addition is happening. Well, fortunately, because the function is simply just vector two out, and it turns out that it doesn't really matter. Uh, it, it not really matter. It doesn't matter at all. Uh, the addition of, of x and y on the in the domain is transferred intact to the uh, domain uh, to the codomain. Okay. So specifically, well, here here's if you if you were to do it with, with numbers, actually, this is the x and y one one and two, and then uh, the or sum is is x plus y. So then it is what what's the physics of the of this particular function is is it's, it's a stretch uh, by a factor of two, and then what happens to the addition? Well, it's been stretched, but nonetheless it's still addition. So so one becomes two, uh, two becomes four, and then uh, what uh, three becomes six. Okay, so because of this, the nature of the of the problem, a uniform stretch, 
the, the nature of the of the transformation uniform stretch then the all the addition all the algebra that we had uh, among the uh, the x's actually we missed up here this is x and this is y so this is type here uh, okay so uh, so then uh, the, the stretch uh, uh, does not change the algebra roughly speaking okay so it'll just bigger and that's it um, as you can see you it's 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 a matter of of uh, of um, different uh, units also so it's the same story if you switch from from one unit to another one so so if you go from inches to feet uh so what what's the difference so so the you you have no doubt that if you have five inches and three feet and then you have eight feet what if i translate first into 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 inches and um, from inches to feet or feet to inches and then do algebra it's it's the same there there naturally there there will be no difference in the output i go, go back to the uh, two inches from feet and once again i have the same answer okay so that's what's special about linear operators and this is once again if you want to uh, see the uh, uh more at the diagram as you can see so once again we have a transformation from x to y and we have, and then the question becomes, do we add first or then we multiply? Doesn't matter. Okay, so that's literally uh, the addition of in our domain X is X and Y. And then if I take the red route here, I add them first and then I multiply by two. Or I take the green route, so I multiply by two first and then I add them together. But naturally, the result is the same. Everybody knows that. Okay, so uh, well, what's the nature of the, what has happened here at the bottom? This, this is really the, what, what the... I think we can here uh, what, what the, the point here is uh, at the bottom. Uh, and the naturally it's just factoring, right? Factoring, we, we know that perfectly well about uh, about um, uh, about numbers, right? So so that, that's what we, we want. Uh, the two routes taken uh, produce the same result, and the algebra of X is projected into the algebra of one. So so it, it doesn't matter which one. Uh, here's how it fails. X plus one actually is such a simple function, but actually the same idea fails. Because look at it, that extra one uh, on the, there's only one extra one on the left, there are two extra ones on the right, and therefore there's a mismatch. And so th this function is not, uh, it does not preserve addition. Okay, so, well, then uh, examples that do not preserve addition is everything does not, nothing preserves addition. So x squared, look at it, x plus y squared is not equal to x squared plus y squared. Okay, so, so naturally, if you were to ask yourself why, y is uh, x x plus y is multiplication by two uh does the does preserve addition that's what the, uh, i i have there uh y does x squared no, not preserve addition in one word what would that word would be non-linear okay so it is it is the slope of two x is the same, and so it doesn't matter where you do your addition, it's, it's, the effect will be the same. But if it is x squared, so well let's let's do more square root of x plus y is not equal to square root of x plus square root y. Sine x plus y is not equal to uh, is not equal to sine x plus sine y. So what do the, these functions have in common? There are so many of them, oh, they're not they're not linear. So there are very few linear functions, as a matter of fact. Uh, uh, the, the, the functions that preserve uh, preserve addition uh, among numerical functions, literally, literally, there's only one. It's multiplication by a number. So all of these, this is origin. These are the, these are the linear functions, and the rest of the function you can think of all the things that you have seen before uh, in, in whatever the, the course of mathematics you've taken. They are not linear. They do not satisfy this really really nice property. Okay, so um, uh, so these are these are common mistakes, you know, uh, that that's made if you you did. did we're careful about learning about these functions is to presume that you can factor out these functions. OK, you can factor out square root, you factor out sine, you factor squares. This, this surely is the most common, common mistake in algebra. And, uh, and it is, it is why it is so, so commonly happening, because the linearity is such a natural idea that we want to apply even where it does not belong. OK, so, so the linearity that we can factor our function out, that's what it is. Uh, if, if the function is not linear, uh, we fail. Okay, so uh, so so that's the question here or there. Can we factor out the function? And then once again, the typical answer is uh, no. Generally speaking, the answer is no. There are exceptional special functions, and these are these are what we're interested in in this course. Okay, so logarithm, whatever, also not it. 
So, so it's such a simple function. So the only, only uh, yes is uh, f of x is equal to kx. Okay, that that's it. So very small class of functions among among numerical functions that satisfy this property. So, uh, so it is just way too simple, you, you think. But the the complexity starts. The complexity is not with the nature of the function, but with the dimensions in this class. So even even in in dimension two. Uh, there are way a lot of linear operate, uh, linear uh, operators, and that that preserve addition. They, then uh, the the question, first of all, let, let me point that out again. Uh, that uh, if we started with the algebra of of numbers, right? That's the algebra of numbers to begin with, and we just had an example of how under what circumstances that algebra can be translated from x to y. Uh, and now we are with vectors, but they they still have algebra, right? So uh, uh, vector spaces have algebra. So we, once again, will the algebra translate it for them into codomain under our, our, our under what kind of uh, transformation? The answer is uh, uh, jump, jumping to uh, one the more 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 uh, interesting one under rotation, uh, addition of vectors under rotation. Okay, so I have an addition diagram on the left, and then uh, and then uh, the transformation between two is everything, the whole plane. Uh, the whole plane is to, to be clear that the plane is rotated. If the plane is rotated, the diagram is also rotated. Uh, but it's the same same parallelogram. So it's the same parallelogram uh, 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 rotated. Okay. So so then the question becomes once again just just as, as I did it a minute ago. Do we first add and then we rotate, or we first rotate the two and then we add them together? And the answer is the answer is the same once again. It's the same exact diagram. Uh, except, uh, except instead of uh, we're doing the stretch over there in dimension one, we're now doing a rotation in dimension two. So rotation is not exactly a simple uh, 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 function, and uh, uh, but nonetheless, nonetheless, because everything is intact, not even a stretch here in in, in sight, uh, the the diagram of addition uh, uh, is, is preserved. So so uh, this is actually a plus b. This is my vector. The yeah, a plus b. This is my c. The the blue one. The blue one. Okay, so the one that we just uh, uh, the blue one on the left, this this is the one. Okay, or or alternatively, uh, we uh, that's on the left, on the right, we first rotated both of them. So green and and, and red, uh, uh, green and red are rotated, and now we're looking at the diagram on the right, and then and then they add them together. Okay, so this this is the uh, this is the C, and then and then and then it produces f of f of C f of C right here. Okay, or we are going right here. We first uh, transfer the two graphs, and then we start over here. And this is f of f, f of a f of plus f of b. Okay, and so and then once again we're saying it is the same. The, the picture itself, I hope, is is, is clear in that respect. It makes sense that it is uh, 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 the parallelogram construction of, of addition of vectors is is preserved under rotation, so not, nothing can ever happen to it. So uh, all right, so that's that's exactly what we call it. We call uh, the, the our operators operator in any dimension. Look at look at it now. I quickly jump through uh, to the high dimensions. It doesn't matter what the dimension is. The algebra of these two, the domain is R n, uh, the codomain is R m. Uh, there is an algebra there, and so we just require the the algebra factors on the left and on the right. And what we're saying that the algebra uh, in the domain will produce the algebra in the codomain, no matter what the dimensions are. OK. And we have already a couple of examples. Uh, stretch. Stretch is, is predictably also has that property. Uh, in this case, a uniform stretch happens to be a uniform stretch. A uniform stretch. So uh, diagram, addition diagram, if you stretch, well, in this case, it's actually a shrink. You shrink it uh, uh, size wise. It's still a parallelogram and still the, well, the meaning is that the, in the, on the left or on the right, the blue vector is the sum of the red plus, plus green. Okay, so so whether you rotate it as the first example, the second example is stretch or shrink. Uh, once again, the operations are preserved. Reflection even simpler. Literally, you have a, you have some some addition of vectors happening on the left. Imagine that you have a mirror. And so somebody adding vectors on the left, and then you see the same same reflection. That person doing adding vectors on the right. So once again, reflection also preserves the uh, the, um, uh, the 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 addition. Okay. So um, uh, it turns out that that's that this is the uh, the thing. Uh, if our operator is given by a matrix, it preserves addition. Okay. 
So, so once again, remember, so then that bunch of numbers in, in a table with multiplication uh, that we have uh, we, we have introduced, uh, then it will always preserve a dimension. OK, so once again, dimension doesn't matter. So it is a very narrow class of functions, but it is, uh, as dimensions are higher, you, you would have like, actually quite a lot of things that can happen. OK, so uh, just take a quick look. Why, why we ask ourselves, why is this true? Addition on the left and addition on the right, and this is the if in, in dimension two, so so it's still manageable. Uh, what, what the operation produce? Uh, the addition of vectors before f is applied, and as you can see, that's that's the the end result is is over there at the bottom bottom left. Or we first uh, alternatively we first uh, um, tra transform the vectors, and then we are we adding them. So so as you can see, the end result is the same. So we do going this way, the left hand side or the right hand side. And then there's always once again the same. So it is a, then it is not a small class anymore, but a large class of functions really uh, that has this nice problem. Uh, preservation of algebra. Non-uniform stretch, just, just to make sure that there, it's not about really uh, having the diagram in, intact. So I'm stretching it in the horizontal direction. Uh, that's my F. And nonetheless, addition of vectors, which is in the, on the left, uh, left column here, Producing a plus b, well, it's it matches matches the uh, the the picture on the right. So the uh, uh, unidirectional stretch still produces uh, produces or uh, transform uh, addition diagram on the left to another addition diagram on the right, and so once again everything everything is great. Okay. Vector operation is a scalar multiplication. So, uh, so, so in other words, I want to that operation to be also preserved. So, once again, this, this is what we're talking about. Uh, once again, this is my f, and I have algebra here, and I have algebra there, and we already did addition. It is preserved under if we have a matrix, but also there's scalar multiplication. Scalar multiplication is a very simple operation because it's all one vector, and all it does is stretches the vector. So, then we ask ourselves if we stretch a vector before we uh, uh, we uh, do a transformation. Uh, will will that make a difference? The order of operations. And as you can see here, uh, this is a typo here. So uh, f of x is uh, uh, is uh, 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 is multiplication by two again. Okay, so that's my function again, and that's the preserved scale multiplication. That's what it means. So, so once again, these two are equal to each other, or but the difference is either we multiply x by three first and then by two, okay? So, or we are we are multiplying two and three first and then, uh, and the, the answer is it, well maybe. Hold on a second. Uh, hold on a second. Um, preserve scale multiplication, scale multiplication x and 3x. Okay, so I'm doing 3x and multiply by 2. Or, or alternatively, what is that I do first? Uh, I do, uh, yeah, so uh, so actually, the, what it's another type of here, so 3, 2x. That's that's what the, really the point we need to make here. Okay, so the first function comes or, and then the stretch or, or vice versa. Uh, okay, like this. Okay, f of three x is two three x. Uh, that's on the left, and on the right, what I have is f of three x, which is uh, no, that's the same. Uh, yeah. uh, three three on the outside, like this. Okay, fine. Perfect. Um, so, so the algebra is, is, is fairly transparent, uh, uh, even though I'm in the mess here. And then, uh, so once again, the uh, the diagram applies. Uh, the uh, function applied first, multiplication by two, or multiplication or stretch of the of the number uh, applies second. Once again, the answer is the same. It's just rearranging the terms. Okay, so. Um, uh, once again, the easy to show the examples when it's not working out as a, a plus one, a x plus one, it does not preserve scale multiplication. Okay, and then uh, a better example, you might wonder why, but you can see the algebra. Uh, a less, less, less uh, obvious, uh, obvious kind of example is x squared. Once again, why so? Because it's once again the answer is nonlinear. 
And uh, just as it, it does not preserve addition, does not preserve scale multiplication, as you can see, the differences right here is, is quite transparent because, you know, K cannot be factored out out of square, just as it cannot be factored out of, of, of square root, say, square root of, of, of three, three X is not equal to three square root of X. And then uh, what else? Sine three X is not equal to three sine X, like this. Uh, sine x. So can we factor it out? The question becomes again: uh, Can we factor out uh, multi scale multiplication out of the or, or out of a function? And the answer is we cannot, unless the function is linear. Okay, so uh, so that's that we say that the scale of multiplication is preserved if if we can. So that's literally what has happened here. K was on the inside of the function, and then it came out and ended up to be on the outside. So that's 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 a, a significant simplification. Uh, and once again, the algebra uh, before or after the function makes no difference. In general, it does and does uh, it does matter a lot. So so once again, if you look at this one, do we multiply by three first and then square, or we do a square root first and then multiply by three? The answer is, of course, it's not the same. Okay, so that's the general state, state the general state of affairs. Uh, but for special functions, this is this is what it looks like. And once again, because we speak of vector spaces of any dimension, uh, the uh, the, uh, uh, the the algebra still still applies. So it's, the algebra for x's and for y's is there. And so once again, it's supposed to be uh, supposed to be preserved. Okay, so uh, so these are the two diagrams. If you look at them uh, carefully, uh, you, you you can recognize certain. Uh, properties of of uh, of algebra. So if you do algebra and don't think about functions, that these are actually things have to happen quite a bit. Uh, you look at it if you carefully look at this one. It's as if right there in the middle, as if I factor really f. You think of f as a number. If f was a number, and and then then what what has happened here is I factor f out. Okay, so f a plus f b is equal to f a plus b. Okay, so that makes sense if f is a number. Uh, yes, yeah, so if f was a number, and it is in dimension one. It is a number. It's in the high dimension. It is. It is. It is. Then, then we know what the answer is. The answer is it is uh, an operator, uh, a function uh, defined by means of a uh, matrix. So, uh, for example, every motion will uh, preserve scale multiplication in, in addition to preserving uh, addition. Okay, so. Uh, the uh, the summation diagram is preserved. That's what's on the left, and on the right, it's it's uh, it's the same story. If you stretch first and then move, or you first move and then stretch, the result is the same. Okay, so so once again, uh, more, more generally, uh, every uh, a function given by uh, every function given by a matrix will preserve scale multiplication. And finally, the punchline here is: if a function preserves both uh, scale multiplication and addition, we call it a linear operator. Okay, a linear map, linear transformation, all of these words are also appropriate. Okay, so, uh, and, and once again, we already know that here it is. If we have, if we have, well, let's not do this one, but rather, um, yeah, if f given by a matrix, uh, actually it's written somewhere below, but let's make that point now, uh, then f is a linear operator. OK, so so there you go. So so matrices and linear operators are pretty much the same. Um, OK, so uh, computations, so uh, linear combinations, that's that's kind of a, a, an important uh, theorem now is a different take on, on the same idea. So uh, if I call linear operators, then it preserves linear combinations. So here I, I'm combining both of the uh, scale multiplication in addition to one and what is how to combine the, them together. It is simply called a linear combination, and so so you can say that uh, that we preserve linear combinations. Is I don't want to introduce it to the definition, but as you can see, I have I have uh, a and b combined together with weights x, x, and y. That's on the left. What's on the right? Well, I take the outputs of the of the of the of my function and once again combine them with the same weights x and y. Okay, and then it turns out it doesn't matter. So uh, the computations uh, component-wise, so this just to confirm that you can do it with the uh, with the um, um, this is done with Excel. So the so the computations carried out very uh, straightforwardly. Uh, as I said, uh, a function given by scale by matrix 
is a linear operator. Conversely, every linear operator is defined by by matrix. So, so these two things are are, are pretty much identical. The, what's the difference? Uh, naturally, uh, the linear operator is defined by its properties, which is very common in mathematics. Uh, while while matrix is literally a table of numbers. Okay, so it turns out that's that's the same thing. So whenever necessary, whatever necessary, we use either one or the other property. So if we need specificity, we have a matrix. If we want to use some properties and do some algebra very quickly, uh, then we use the other. The, we use the fact that the, this is a linear operator. So we're going to do both. OK, so uh, this is number one uh, property, the simplest uh, property of a linear operator that it takes 0 to 0. Okay, so. Can you think of a reason why? Linear operator takes zero vector to, to the zero vector. Well, the, the simplest way to, to address it is to look at this theory. You see what I'm saying? The, right, so your vector is made of zeros. Remember, what the zero vector is made of zeros. So if you do matrix multiplication by a zero vector, you're going to end up with, with zeros, right? So, so that, that surely it's, a, it's like this is your matrix. F, and then you look at one row at a time multiplied by a vector, but that vector is all made of zeros. So then naturally, whatever you do, you will end up with your zeros. So that's the direct way of, of addressing it. In other, in other ways, this could be say uh, you use the property. So number one, say F X minus X is actually, well, F of zero is F of X minus X, and this is F of X minus F of X. And this is zero. So I'm using linearity property. Okay, I can factor it out. So, well, indirect, but but also uh, in fact. Or how about this f of zero is equal to f of zero times x, which is zero times f of x, which is zero. Okay, so a bunch of ways to, to see it the same the same thing. Uh, so that certainly removes from consideration certain functions right away, such such as a shift. A shift is a very simple uh, 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 transformation, but it's not it. Not a shift. Or shift is not a linear operator, once again. That's the point of, of a shift is that you move zero somewhere, but that's not the linear operator. Okay, so uh, so linear operators are functions, and so the question that we, we may ask are um, the same. So we will be asking questions about one to one, on to, and, and stuff like that. So okay, so the uh, the zero vector is the, the zero linear operator. Okay, so literally, remember, it corresponds to the zero. Um, the, the matrix made of zeros. It produces naturally uh, the zero um, um, operator, which is a constant. So to be clear, this is a constant, a constant function. It is the simplest one. So number one, the simplest one. There are two simplest ones. So the, the number one simplest one is a constant, but uh, a constant, right? This is a one, the simplest function is a constant function, but there are infinite many of them, generally speaking, among linear operators, however, there's only one, because that's the one that takes everything to zero. Everything it collapses to zero, remember this one. You like this, that's, that's what, the, uh, that's what the, uh, the zero operator is. So everything is collapsed, rushed into zero. Okay, so that's the linear operator. Uh, remember the second linear, uh, the second simplest, function on the other. So, so this one takes everything to zero. OK, so every x goes to zero under my, my operator. The other, so everything goes somewhere in its same location. The, the other simplest was, oh, well, this is the matrix, by the way. That's what it looks like. Uh, once again, you can carry out multiplication. I forgot to mention this. Uh, so carry out uh, multiply, no matter what the vector is over here, uh, you start multiplying by the zero vector, you will end up with a zero vector. Oh. Zero matrix times non-zero vector will give you zero. 
So, uh, on the other end of the spectrum is the identity function that does nothing to 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 a function. Okay, so we to to a vector. Every vector is is kept exactly intact. Okay, so it's also linear operator, and then uh, the uh, so it is uh, literally that's this is the definition of the function. I'm not really introducing anything new here. Uh, we already know that there, no matter what what uh, the domain codomain is, uh, we we have a constant function, and then if domain and codomain are identical, okay, then in that case you have you can you have the third uh, the second option uh, for simplest function, and that function that takes x to x, okay. So uh, literally, literally you, you can you can you've seen that function. So in dimension one, it is literally this line, okay. The question becomes, what's the what's the what's the matrix? Okay, so this is it. Y equal x. Uh, y equal x. Uh, that's dimension one. What about dimension two? Okay, so uh, and then you know that my 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 uh, my uh, matrix will have consist of four numbers. Okay, so and remember the the the. Uh, the idea of how we deal with the uh, with those uh, the meanings of the four numbers. Remember, so the meaning of these numbers is what on the diagonal. The four numbers. Remember, okay. So to, to refresh your memory, x y, x y. So that's that's why we have four entries because we have two variables. Uh, in domain and codomain, and therefore uh, the, the transformation relate one to the other. Okay, so the top left, what's the meaning of that number? Nobody remembers what's the meaning of that number? Well, the, 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 well, let me just give you the answer. Uh, but the um, it is it is literally the relation between x's in the domain and x's in the codomain. And in this particular case, the answer is there is no there is no change. So it will be one. Okay. The same thing with y and y. There is no change. Okay. So they will have ones. So what about the other two entries? Remember what. X and Y, what's what's the relation between X and Y? X in the domain, Y in the codomain, what's the relation? In for this particular function, for this function, for the identity function. XY goes to XY. That's that's my function. Yeah, it's it has a name here. It's 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 uh, the notation is I, by the way. There, the output X does not depend on Y, okay? And the output Y does not depend on X. X goes to X and Y goes to Y, and there is nothing happening, that's why we have two zeros here, okay? So, so that, that's, that's the clue of the, the on the main diagonal, main diagonal the, these two, two ones reflect the relation between, between the two X's and the relation between two Y's, okay? So, and in this case, the, the relation is intact. And the, but secondly, the other two entries are related to X and Y, and Y, how it depends on X, and there is no dependence. The Y does not affect X, and X doesn't depend on Y, that's what we have to, we have to zero. So, so that's, if, if these are not, not number, not, not once, so if, what's the meaning of this? The meaning of this, if you remember. What's the meaning of two? What does it do? Yeah, it's in the codomain is double what it is in the domain. Right. So yes, and the, and then the meaning of that is a stretch. So in the x direction, that's a stretch in the x direction. And if I put a three here, that will be combined with a stretch by three in the in the y direction. Okay. So that when the other two zeros are the uh, the uh, the other two entries are zeros. The nothing nothing special happening. Only kind of stretching and, and shrinking and possibly a flip. Okay. So we already had had the examples of these. Uh, but these two are uh, the simplest op operators are are to be to be used uh, quite a bit. This is what the big matrix looks like. Um, it's the square matrix to be clear. 
Okay, so generally speaking, in the, the y is it square because the dimensions match. Okay, these dimensions match. Well, the input and output dimensions match. Otherwise, it's not an identity. Okay, you cannot take x to x unless it's pretty much the same space. And so, uh, and so, and then it's a square matrix. Uh, and then on the main diagonal, we have ones. So uh, everything remains intact in each of the directions, and there is no interaction between different dimensions. That's the identity uh, for you. Okay, so so once again, you can test it and can confirm that that exactly what happens. If you when you start multiplying, look at it uh, and start multiplying this by that, right? What do I get? I get this. Okay, so I end up with x1. So everything else, x1 comes out uh, with coefficient 1, the rest come out with coefficient 0, and therefore I am left with x1. And just carry it out there for every of the rows uh, uh, and end up with, yes, indeed, the, the, uh, the, the vector it comes out intact. x1 for, for xn reappear at the end. I have x in the beginning, I have x at the end. Okay, so... Um, uh, So to, just to refresh your memory that uh, that about linearity, and so just just something is very hard to skip over because even though we're not going to be using it here in this class, but but it is really a, a, a big big deal in in um, in calculus, and that is uh, uh, the uh, what happens to algebraic operations, which we've been talking about, addition, scale, multiplication, uh, when we do limits and continuity. And the answer is, once again, nothing. And that if you remember calculus one, uh, what happens to the limits under, if you, you do addition of, uh, of, for example, addition of functions, what happens uh, if you take their limit? You can take the limit of the two functions beforehand and then add them, or you add them first and then take the limit. And once again, what the calculus tells you that it makes no difference, okay? So, so then it's like cause and effect, and then you have a convergence on the input, it produces convergence on the output, okay? So that's that's either you can speak once again of convergence, or you speak of continuity. So, okay, so that's then the, that, that line that you see here, this is, uh, so this is calculus. A big deal about calculus, really about the, how, how everything that you deal with there, everything that you introduce, in a sense that we have discussed is linear. Okay, so so once again, what if you change the uh, um, you, you change the input in a linear fashion, doing linear operation with them, such as addition, scale, multiplication, so the output will have also have the same effect, even though the the uh, the the uh, our, our operators is kind of complicating calculus, obviously because it's a, it's a, such a thing as as um, as uh, as a limit. Okay, but then it also applies to derivative. It also applies to uh, uh, to integrals. Okay, uh, we were looking at simple situation, so we, we, we were looking at linear algebra, and so, so way everything way, way simpler than calculus, but the idea is there. So, so the, if you remember the theorems of calculus, some rule of limits, some rule of derivatives, some rule of integrals, and then you have a constant multiple rule of, of limits of, of, of derivatives and of integrals. That's what we're talking about. Uh, once again, some rule and constant multiple rule of, of calculus, and there are, like I said, there are, there are probably three versions of them at least uh, that you see, and then if you progress to, to high dimensions, then there will be more because, because you have to do them again in high dimensions. Okay, so uh, so once again, this is this is how we can informally describe linearity. If you double or triple the, co the cause, then it double, triples the effect. If you combine the causes, then that's the scale multiplication, okay? If you combine the causes, then you combine the effects in the exact same manner, okay? So that, that's that's the linearity. So uh, and, uh, literally, effects, there's there's a, you, you can also think about uh, rather than effect, you uh, cause, how about effort and result? You see what I'm talking about here? You double your effort, you double your result in some happy universe, you know. In reality, it never, never happens, right? So even though it, on a small scale, probably it is, it, is, it is true, and that's what calculus tells you. On a small scale, everything is linear. So if you, you double your result, or if you, I don't know, you multiply your, your, your result goes up by 1.1 by 10%. There is a, the, the effort. Then your, your result will also go one by 1.1. But if you double your effort, that, that idea probably disappeared. 
So unfortunately, and then there's wars and there's a ceiling and there are all, all kinds of non-linear facts that we actually uh, deal with in, in real life. Uh, but like, once, once again, we simplify everything to the degree that it at all imaginable, and that's what we end up with the idea of linearity, when everything is really, really simple. So once again, cause and effect, effort, result, once again, is the dependence between the same simple or is it more complex? Is it linear or is it not linear? So, uh, so once again, that's that's what uh, the linearity explains here. So once again, constable, uh, constable, uh, multiple rule and sum rule. Okay, so 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 once again, we are uh, uh, my function is multiplication by three, but the but the operations are e either a scale multiplication multiplication. Uh, five a okay. So if I multiply by five and then multiply by three, the result is the same. If I first multiply by three and then by five, makes no difference. Addition precedes by multiplication by three or followed by multiplication by multiplication by three. Same result. So so that's that's once again uh, the language that we use in in linear algebra. Less so, but more in calculus is the constant multiple rule and the sum rule, and there are a bunch of them. Okay, so uh, so so and then so we read so that's that's we say that multiplication by three is a linear function and that is applicable equally to to multi dimension. So in any dimension, you can multiply by three x goes to three x, right? I can take any vector and multiply by three, and that will happen in every dimension. Once again, it is it is uh, it is that function is linear. Uh, uh, so squaring, look at the squaring that does not work out. Okay, so if you, you multiply first by five and then square. That's one, or I first square and then multiply by five, the result is not the same. So constant multiple rule fails, but so does the sum rule. So adding, then squaring, or squaring, then adding, yeah, it makes a difference. Non-linear function. So it is it is assuming linear. If you want to classify a mistake that you may have made, and that's a good idea. So that's that's you have assumed it, uh, uh, linearity, and that's once again you, you factor sign out, uh, which is not allowed because it is a non-linear function. And so you can you can think of a bunch of examples just about throw a dart at, at list of functions and, and they are all non-linear because we have so few linear functions. Okay, so uh, okay, so this is in general, once again, how it works out, linearity, any function in the, the two algebraic operations. I'm using lowercase here, uh, but you can you can just uh, replace everything with uppercase and then suddenly you're talking about vectors rather than numbers. Okay, so this is the uh, constant multiple sum rule. The output of a multiple is the multiple of the output. The output of, of the sum is the sum of the outputs. Okay, so uh, replace output with, say, what? Uh, limit. Or derivative. Okay, so the derivative of a multiple is the derivative of the out of the, uh, the, the multiple of the derivative. Okay, the derivative of the sum is the sum of the derivatives. Okay, so that's that's the um, that's how you see linearity in, in, in calculus. Um, and once again, we are in a way simple place because everything is finite dimensional. We don't speak of functions, we speak of, uh, of uh, vectors. Okay, so all right, so let's, uh, let's uh, take a closer look at, at linear operators. Um, uh, as transformations, we have, have had a bunch of examples. Uh, mostly they are in dimension two, in dimension three, things are more complicated. Nonetheless, let's run through a few examples because that's how we build intuition. And then we cannot, even dimension three is way too complicated. But then if you go with the high dimensions, uh, spaces of data, uh, then uh, some of the things still can be rec recognizable. So, so we already have a stretch. You can stretch in any dimension, right? You multiply by vectors by three, and every the you, your everything has been stretched. You can flip. Okay, so uh, uh, you can do non-uniform stretching. So once again, the, uh, the, the these ideas are totally uh, totally um, applicable to no matter what the dimension is. Rotation is more complicated. So this is rotation 180 degrees, by the way. Uh, so you have to the, the challenge is how to choose you have to choose the axis. So so on the plane there is only one axis to rotate. You you take the origin and rotate around it. And now in dimension three, uh, how many what axis can you pick? Any any of the three axes in every every line through the origin can be rotated around. Okay, so so you, you can see how, how much how much stuff can, can actually happen and then everything is still linear. Okay, and the, the variety of things that can happen. 
So, uh, so I'll skip over this and um, um, uh, just, just uh, um, um, what am we, how do we examine, how do we understand what's happening? So that was the uh, the idea from calculus is or what does rotation do to the calculus function at 180 degrees? And sometimes the function is is looks like this. Uh, what what does we call a function like this? Rotate 180 degrees and it, it comes back. What do we call this function? What a kind of function is that? If you look at Simon, so follow the arrows. It is that the whole plane, the grid, is rotating 180 degrees, not 360, 180. And then, as you can see in the beginning and the end, it's the same. What do we call functions like this? Odd, correct. Odd. Okay, so this is that's cubed. Odd power, right? Okay. So, uh, so then, uh, so then the the so that's that if we plot graphs, so we can understand that what our trying, we're not looking at the function now. So that's let's see the difference. We're not interested in the in the graph of that function. We are interested in the transformation, and we understand what the transformation does if we follow with with to see what's happening to to things on the plane. So either we follow the this this curve, curve or we follow the grid. Okay, the rectangular grid. So, uh, so, so, for example, this this is a pretty good, uh, pretty good example of of, uh, of a transformation that we just talked about. We even know two two zero zero four. What does it do? Two zero zero four. What does it do? Uh, stretches. Stretches horizontally by two and vertically by four. This is the effect. Also done with Excel. Excel, by the way. So, so I drew in the original. The, on the left, I have my domain, right? Uh, and the and each of the lines, the, the grid, that's the grid uh, tells you anything. Maybe not if you try to transform the grid, the grid. Uh, but I chose these lines to see where they go to understand what the transformation does. And so this is my code domain. And then these lines, as you can see there, if you go uh, counterclockwise, the blue, the brown, the green, and purple, and blue again, and then orange. Okay, so you can see what has happened. The blue one is is not intact technically, right? It's been stretched, but it didn't change the direction. So that's the horizontal stretch. The vertical one, the orange one, you can see how how those arrows were close to each other, and now they're far from each other. That's the stretch. So you can actually totally see here. Uh, and so the vertical and horizontal are, even though they have been stretched, it's if it is an infinite, infinite line, still an infinite line. So you can say, well, it looks exactly the same. Uh, uh, but the what more interesting what's happening in between, and then uh, it turns out every vector is rotated. E every line is rotated because uh, because the of the uniform non uniform stretch. Okay, if the uniform was stretched, well, once again the they will be not changed the direction, so the angles will, will stay stay the same, and therefore the lines would would stay pointed in exactly the same direction. But because the uh, the stretch is non uniform, there is this rotation or fanning out of the all these lines. Okay, so that's something uh, to worry about. Uh, to be clear, I'm, I'm not stretching the x-axis. I say I may, I may have said that, but the, the, the reality is it's a horizontal stretch and a vertical stretch. So literally imagine, uh, um, so whatever we do, we apply to the whole plane. And so, so then the horizontal stretch means literally like this. We're not taking the x-axis and stretch, but we take, we take the whole thing as if it's made of rubber and pull it in, in the different direction, and then we do the same with the in the vertical direction. Okay, so uh, so other lines. So let me skip this. Uh, uh, so so uh, we we can uh, we can uh, do transformations uh, once again, and then we can plot different curves and see where they go. And so so once again, to refresh your memory about something, just just maybe it will help to, to understand what what's ha happening. Uh, the transformation, you can transform every parabola, uh, uh, the parabola f of x equal to x squared into any parabola through simple uh, uh, linear transformation. So, so there will be uh, stretches, vertical and horizontal, and there will be uh, uh, flips, and there will be shifts. Okay, done not a linear transformation. And the, the only thing that's not here, there will be no rotation, because if you rotate a parabola, what's going to happen? If you rotate a parabola, what's the what's what what kind of curve do you see? What's wrong with this? Is well, it's worse than that. It's not even a function, right? 
So the f of x is not one to one. Uh, I mean, x squared is not one to one. But this one, but it's a function, right? But this one is not a function because it's not that it's violating the horizontal line test. This one does, but it's still a function. This one violates the vertical line test. And so, so then that's why it's not. So, so that's why we, we do not rotate it, but it's still, we keep that in mind. And uh, um, so we do the same with circles. In this case, we could rotate it, it would make no difference. It's, it's a circle. And so once again, these are the shifts. And, uh, and we do the same with, uh, so lines, parabolas, and circles, we, we transform one to, into the other uh, arbitrarily. And so every parabola can be acquired in that manner, and every circle can be acquired in that manner. And so that's roughly the, the basis for, for the, the construction that we have. And that's create a grid on, among the, on, the X plane, on the original plane, and then see where these curves go under the transformation. Okay, so, so once again, we're flipping the, the script here. We're not interested in the, uh, these are not, not, not the questions anymore. Uh, these are the answers. The, the, our, uh, these are the observations. The observations that will tell us what what our linear operator does. Okay, so uh, so in here roughly what what's supposed to happen here a parametric curve. Okay, on the plane, uh, and then under our transformation it turned into something else. Okay, that's that's all there is. So naturally the uh, an effective way of doing it is to look at the grid. And well, so we already did the grid with the rectangular Cartesian grid, but you can also have the polar grid, right? If I plot, plot a bunch of uh, uh, concentric circles, it creates a, some kind of grid. And then the transformation, you can see very clearly that, uh, that uh, uh, my transformation has stretched uniformly uh, our, our plane. Because, well, why uniformly? Because the circles are just circles. So the dimensions haven't changed. And therefore, we know that this is a uniform, transfer, uh, uniform stretch. OK? Um, uh, another thing to uh, look at, at is what if, that's hypothetical, and what if, um, well, I'll, I'll do that later. So, so depending on whatever you're trying to discover about the, discover about the function, uh, about the transformation, rather, you look at either circles or you look at straight lines. Okay, so we looked at the straight lines right here, uh, the straight lines passing through the origin. Now we also looked at the circles. And then uh, naturally, the, uh, the traditional Cartesian grid is, is the main uh, tool of ours. Okay, so this is the traditional grid, right? And so once again, these are also made up of lines, and then every line is transformed by F somewhere else. And you, you, you can decide what, what, what it does. Uh, so once again, this is the, uh, the uh, polar grid. You, you, everybody familiar with the polar coordinates, right? So that's that's where it comes from. So the, once again, two numbers: your uh, the angle and the, the distance from the origin, and that creates a grid, curved grid. But nonetheless, it's very revealing about what our operator does. So uh, let, let's take a look at some of the examples uh, with and using the grid that is the, that is necessary uh, depending on the circumstances. So this is a projection. Y equal to 2x. Well, it's not, not a projection. You might, might not even know right away what it is. But you have a stretch in the horizontal direction. That's what it is. The horizontal direction is stretch. And then what happens uh, along the y direction is collapse like this. Stretch, well, or stretch like this, and then collapse like that. OK, so that's the matrix 2, 0, 0, 0. OK, so how do we illustrate it? And then the, the result is sounds kind of dramatic because our circle become what? You see what our, our circle have become? They flatten out, yes. Right, so literally, if you have a circle and then, then you project, they, they flatten and stretch, but nonetheless, they flatten and then stretch, or first stretch and then flatten makes no difference. The, the end result are the intervals, so you, you can hardly see them on the left, but this, this one definitely is, is one of those, this one. One of the circles that have been crushed into, into the excess. OK, so like this. And uh, uh, yeah, so a bunch of zeros indicate collapse. Uh, this one, once again, stretch. Look at this also very, very, uh, very instructive. Uh, uh, the, this uh, non-uniform uh, stretch, you can see how our circles have become ellipses, right? And so disproportionate because the stretch in the vertical direction is twice. Therefore, they will be stretched in the vertical direction, OK? Uh, and this is once again the fanning out of the of the straight lines. Um, and once again, along axis, negative sign. What does negative sign do? 
So, so the, my matrix is negative one, zero, zero, four. That's what negative x, uh, where negative x comes from. Uh, so the and uh, you see the, the you see the stretch in the vertical direction. What else do you see? Uh, flip. How do you see the flip? Uh, Among the circle, look at the circles. Change of the direction. Change of the direction, right? You see the arrows. So they were going clockwise, counterclockwise, as usually they are. Uh, in the result, we take each curve on the graph one at a time and transfer it into the picture on the right. Once again, done with Excel, and then in the the arrows uh, that uh, turn, turns out go in the opposite direction. That's called a reversal of orientation, and that's what flip does. Reverses orientation, whatever was clockwise, become counterclockwise, and vice versa. So also, that's that's the uh, another thing to pay pay attention to is whether our function is one to one and on to. Okay, so this one uh, one is the projection definitely is not, but this one is. Uh, and sometimes, sometimes we already know what they're supposed to do. Very simple function. Sometimes this is the typical situation. You have a matrix and you have no idea what it does. So then we have two ways to proceed. And initially we proceed with nothing but an experiment. And then uh, it tells me what, what it does. Can you see what it does? From literally nothing but an experiment. No, what do you what what becomes linear? No, what what do you you're saying it becomes linear? What is it? It becomes a line if that's what you're saying. It becomes a line. So what becomes a line? Circle become become circles be, become lines. Okay. So so how would you describe the the transformation? We we had an example very very similar to just just a minute ago, except it was uh, uh, the the the, the x-axis was involved, and now we are just doing the same thing, and the the word is projection. But we're now projecting it on on this line, okay? Which is now was not entirely obvious by by examining just looking at the graph that we I'm sorry uh, the matrix will not tell you what it does. So experimentation does suggest what it does, and you can actually guess what that line is. What is this line? The formula for this line. That's y equal to two x, and that's not that's not so. So in other words. Uh, x, uh, y is double of x, and that's that happens to be the same thing here. Y is double of x. You can recognize it in the in the in the matrix. Uh, but generally, uh, generally, uh, is uh, this is this is what uh, what we discover is uh, is that uh, uh, there is a um, you, you can ask yourself what what this is. Uh, what this is is we are looking for those axes. We're solving an equation. Okay, so we have this matrix F, and to understand what it does exactly. We might do what we might ask ourselves which vectors go to zero. So f of x equal to zero, we need to find x. And so we take my my the same uh, my 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 matrix. I rewrite it back to the uh, to the uh, two two equations and find x and y. I discover that actually uh, turns out turns out that there is actually there is no one single value of x, but rather into the many values of x and the many values of y as long as they are in this relation to each other. Uh, y equal negative one half x, right? Uh, they will go to zero. Okay. So can you see what that that this line this line looks like? Negative one half x. I need to plot it. Is it the well, no, no, inverse would this would be inverse. No, this one goes the negative. So the slope is uh, uh, is negative. It is it is indeed perpendicular. Remember the the prop uh, the uh, the idea that the slopes are reciprocals negative reciprocal so each other. So this is perpendicular, and then so so then our projection is goes along this line, the second line towards the first line. Okay, crush, crush. 
So, so then the, the idea is then uh, beyond experimentation, we should be able to find these directions. That, that's what we, we are really after. So we found them, but is there a better way? So how to find these? That would describe, we we're searching for, for, for description of the, of the transformation uh, based on its matrix and without experimentation, without guessing, without you know, uh, eyeballing what, what's going on. So we'll be looking for for that. So that's the algebra that we need to develop. So so once again, one vector along which we might be doing stretching, and the other one is we are not doing nothing but collapse along the vector U. We have a collapse. So here's another one: bunch of minuses, and you can ask yourself: we have we have minuses. Do do we have a flip there or not? And so so then you experiment. You realize that look at it: the direction has of the of the curve has not changed. So which means that there is no flip. Ultimately, in spite of those negative signs, it still goes counterclockwise, but there's a stretch. So our circles have become ellipses, but in which direction? So it does seem like there is a disproportionate stretch, but it's, it's very hard to tell in which, in which direction it's happening. So if you get me that this is the direction of uh, uh, the, the directions like seems one to two, seems like uh, the, the vertical stretch is double the, that of the horizontal, but that's actually not not quite the case. So so once again, it is more of a question, more of a question than anything right now is what is that we do we do? Even if we have experimented with it, uh, we cannot tell what what it does exactly based on on the experimentation. So we have to uh, develop algebra to uh, to uh, to answer the question what it, what it does. What does it do? Okay. Okay, so uh, uh, this is an interesting matrix. So, so one, one, zero, one. So as you can see, we we have uh, entries of the main diagonal, which means that x and y do inter interact. And then uh, I intentionally intentionally plot instead of circle, I plotted uh, ellipses to see what happens to them. You see what has happened here? How would you describe the transformation? It seems that the how would you describe it? Rotated. It seems that it's rotated, but then the side, then you also have to, you cannot just say rotated because then you, there's also the shape has changed. And and then you, you seems like it is rotated. Uh, so so the, they are longer, right? And if you rotated this one, these ellipses, and then uh, you are in it in this way, but then they, you also have to stretch them at the same time, which, by the way, it does not appear to be here. So stretch, it, it seems that there is no stretch, right? So the, the diagonal elements, uh, X and Y, do not seem to be, to be stretched, uh, to, to, to indicate any stretching. What you notice instead, you notice that actually the, the height is the same. Okay, so maybe the operation is, maybe there is no rotation, because if it is rotation, if it is a rotation, then you would have to also do a stretch, and that seems to be a stretch. And then also, is it a coincidence that the height of these and height of those are the same? So maybe there, there's a different way to describe this transformation. And the answer it is, uh, there is a word for it. Well, here, here's first of all, this is how we can simplify uh, what, what we see. Um, squares become parallelograms. Okay, so um, like a deck of cards. You shift it. It's uh, the word is skewing or shearing. Okay, so have you seen any uh, picture like this? I mean, you know, outside of cards in in nature, maybe anyone? Yes. Oh, uh, yeah. You can do it, it like like uh, maybe um, like layers of of um, layers of. Um, uh, uh, well, you, you, you know, you're driving and there's uh, maybe the, the road was cut through a mountain and then you have these layers, but they are frequently not aligned with it in the kind of perfect way, but rather they're, they're shift because the layers were formed at some point, okay, through millions of years of accumulation. Uh, but then there was maybe, uh, maybe um, a glacier or something pushed it. But non-uniformly, that's exactly what has happened here with the, with the uh, deck of cards. It was pushed. But it was pushed in a. Uh, there was no push at the bottom, okay. Uh, but most of the, uh, the 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 pushes all at the top. 
Okay, so and so gradually the force, uh, small force at the bottom, high force at the top, and that creates this effect. So in, in, uh, an engineering problem that that you encounter in certain certain applications, and so so it has a separate separate issue. Uh, water, by the way, remember the water is actually if, if even if it is not flowing, it has the highest pressure at the bottom and lowest at the top. So the forces can change gradually. Okay, rotation. Uh, we already know that this is a rotation because x becomes uh, uh, x becomes negative y and y becomes x. So uh, and then the matrix becomes this. We already saw it. This is the effect is quite quite transparent. My parallel there, I'm not using circles because uh, to make to 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 detect if circles rotated, we wouldn't see rotation of the circles. But then I'm doing ellipses, and these ellipses clearly have rotated by 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 ninety. Okay, so uh, so this is the so how do we build a new operator? This is a very effective theorem that that tells us how to build a, uh, a, a linear operator. What does it mean to build a linear operator? It means that you have a description uh, and then you want to have a matrix for it. And that's how the columns of the matrix of a linear operator are the values of the basis vectors under this operator. Okay, so so you look at where you, these are basis vectors, the standard basis vectors one, zero, zero, one. After the transformation, you see where they go in the new space, and they suppose they have a coordinates A, C, B, and D. You take these two, and they form the columns of your matrix. Okay, so once again, you have a matrix. Uh, you have you have matrix. You do not have a matrix. You have a you have a linear operator with uh, described somehow uh, uh, in terms of what it does. Okay, so for example, rotation. So, so rotation. Then you, you then if if the description of the operator is complete, uh, then you know where these. You don't look at there anything else. You only need two vectors. The, these two bases that you see where the first goes. So it, it, it the, the one zero. It has become under the transformation has become a C a new vector in the new coordinate system. And zero one the second a basis vector becomes B D. So then uh, it's very easy now to, to combine these uh, four numbers into our matrix. So literally A, B, C, D is, is the matrix of, of my linear operator. Okay, you can, you can see how it works out algebraically right here. A, B multiplied by one, zero. What does it give me? It gives me A, it gives me A, and then I do the other one. I'm doing, uh, I'm doing C, D times one, zero, and it gives me C. Okay. Yeah, so the, the two basis vectors. So where they transform, it works out. It works out in every dimension, by the way. So so imagine then well, once again uh, in the three dimensional case, you have three vectors, uh, and then once again, once again, you see where they go. E one, e two, e three. See where they go. Three vectors, say e one, e two, e three, and these are the 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 columns. The columns of your three by three matrix. Okay, so. So if you have a complete description of your linear operator, you can you can give it a matrix just like, like it's not. So it's a problem really not what we, we I, I, I pointed out here. It's the opposite. Here we have a we have a matrix. We want a description. Okay, and and as a starting point, we solve the problem that's exactly opposite. If we have a description, what is the meaning of the award and what is the matrix? So it is it is important that this kind of a, a meta meta idea is that. Uh, the matrix of a linear operator is fully determined by the value of the basis vectors under the operator. Remember the idea: you can you can think of a of a function as if it's a, a, a linear uh, transformation, as if it's a, your your uh, your plane is 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 a rubbery fabric stretched on two planks. Okay, and then you control the planks. You can you can rotate the whole thing. You can rotate them differently. And then, and then that's the only, and then the the fabric follows. Okay, so so that, that that's that's the explanation of why why it works out, works out the way it does because it's linear. So once again, so uh, let's let's look some some of the examples. So simply zero operator, both of the uh, uh, basis operators go to zero, and therefore the matrix is zero. If the identity one zero goes to one zero, zero one goes to zero one, you have you have a, a matrix with with ones in the main diagonal. And then we have a stretch and we have the other stretch. So okay. So as you can see that, that works out quite well. Okay, so I'll just stop here and I'll see you.